appreciate the work that, that you do. Now, <clears throat> we know that you, you've referred to how many cases uh, in your tenure to the RCMP for investigation and what were kind of the circumstances that they require a, an RCMP investigation. I, I didn't, sorry, I didn't hear the first well, part you, of your you question. You said in your opening comments that yes. you referred at least one. One this year. This year, yeah. but how many in total? I have, have referred 11. And have those in four and a half resulted years. in charges against so those So far, none. So far, none. Yeah. So what was the termination that you wanted the RCMP to take a look at? What was, sorry? The what, what, what would you say, or why would you, was it violations of the criminal oh, code? or? Well, no, your, the, under the Lobbying Act, failing to register um, or, or lobbying when you're prohibited um, is a, an offense under the Lobbying Act. So when I investigate... The, the moment I have reasonable grounds to believe that there was lobbying that was unregistered or that someone uh, lobbied when they were prohibited, I must suspend and refer to the RCMP. And but if the RCMP don't follow up, then they're So the away. RCMP then takes it over, and they, they decide to uh, whether or not to investigate and to pursue and to lay charges... Okay, no charges have ever been laid in no. the 11 cases that you've... And, and they've returned two to me, so they have now nine files. And to the return, they were so two not that they, going to move forward on? And one of them continues to be suspended. One of them I decided to close because one of my recommendations is a spectrum of sanctions. Not all offenses are created equal. And I have no discretion. And so the moment I think someone, the communication they had was in fact lobbying and they should have been registered, I have, to, I have no discretion. I have to send it. Um, so the file that was returned, I simply closed it because it was someone who obviously did not know that they were lobbying. It was one incident and there was no uh, reason to do a report to Parliament on that issue. But if I thought that it came back and that I should file a report to Parliament, that's one option that I could do. So, so that's, that's the state so, of... No, knowing that you have um, the responsibility to report yes. to other agencies like the RCMP, yes. so when you come across a, an individual lobbyist that's offering gifts, for example, that to parliamentarians or pu public office holders, do you also then notify the ethics commissioner? So when it's an investigation under the code of conduct, I report to parliament. So it's two things. So but if I'm, I, I'm saying if you've got a case where a lobbyist offers a gift that's over the thresholds to a public office holder being a parliamentarian, yes. would you then also notify the ethics commissioner that you're investigating somebody for giving a gift to a parliamentarian that they... Get, no, uh, I would not. I have, to, I have to conduct all my investigations in private. And the, a breach of a gift issue under the lobbying regime is a code, it's a code of conduct issue. It's not an RCMP matter in no, that particular case. That. Okay. If you find someone, a lobbyist gave a gift that shouldn't have been given, yes. you would only notify Parliament if the, in one of your reports then, if it was done, and that would be the trigger then that the... No, and I, I, I understand what you... No, if I also uh, am of the view that that gift could be investigated under another legislation, I could suspend and refer the matter to the RCMP. I do have an obligation to spend anything that I'm doing that I believe another authority should look into. So that could happen. It has never happened, but that could happen as well. Because there's, of course, you know, accepting a gift from, uh, from someone uh, by, by a public office holder is a violation of the Criminal Code 121-1C. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that would definitely be RCMP, but then isn't there still the obligation for the ethics commissioner to look at the public office holder that accepted that gift? And when do you want to notify the ethics commissioner that somebody... Yeah, and I, I, I'm not the one who's regulating public office holders. I regulate lobbyists and under the... the like, even though there's two sides to that. There is two sides. Sometimes those wires cross. Absolutely. And then uh, there should be communication between your office and the office of the ethics commissioner. Should yeah, there not? and well, I can, I can tell you that all of us agents of parliament have an obligation to conduct our investigations in private. 
should there be um, a will that we do share? I mean, I even think sometimes investigations might be more effective if we could do interviews at the same time or, or whatever, if in fact it's the same. And let's not forget that lobbyists also lobby senators and public servants. I'm not the mirror image of my colleague, Monsieur Zion, so I have investigations where a lobbyist might have given a gift to a public servant or to a senator. So it's, I, it's, it's not always a perfect a perfect match that lobbyists don't just lobby members of parliament or people that are under the jurisdiction of, of Monsieur Dion. But for me, it's under a code. If I do think that it's something under 121 or any other, if I think, if I see that there's been theft or fraud, or I would suspend and send the, the matter to the RCMP. Thank, thank you. Uh, we're significantly over time, uh, but uh, it was important to get uh, or uh, at least uh, try and get an answer with the time we have. So um, <laughs> you may get another uh, time. We'll see. Um, but uh, next, it's uh, Mr. Baines. Go ahead, Mr. Baines.